go. Well, Connie, after uh, months and months of rescheduling, <laughs> all my <laughs> fault, I finally have you on the show. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, totally. I'm really happy to be here. I'm glad we're finally making it happen. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, none of that was your fault. So when you say where, you mean me. <laughs> <laughs> all good. All good. Beautiful. This is perfect timing because it always is. So. Yes. Yes. Now, before the show, um, we were talking about um, you kind of living that nomadic lifestyle. Were you, were you born and born and raised in, in Berlin? I was born and raised in the south of Germany and I left when I was about 15. And since then, I have spent about a year or two in Berlin, but mainly mm. uh, just living and traveling all over the world. Yeah. Have you, is it, you've always had the travel bug? Uh, you know, as I came to discover uh, a few years ago, uh, there was more to all of this than just the travel bug. I always wanted to explore the world. I was always a very curious human and just wanted to see what's out there. But um, I think uh, one of the main reasons I wanted to get out in the first place was because of the situation at home. You know, mm. my parents were getting divorced and I just never really felt like I had a place. And I also always thought that you know, if I can out travel myself, then I will find happiness in other countries. And, you know, I don't actually have to face my stuff. And then obviously that eventually didn't <laughs> work out anymore. That strategy. So yeah, it's a good strategy. <laughs> I can't believe yeah, it didn't work. It, it was fun for a while. Lots of peak experiences, you know, lots of good stuff. But um, yeah, eventually I also realized that I have to get on that adventure on the inside and, and get onto the inner journey. And that's been pretty pretty awesome yeah 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 i'm i'm very keen to get into that because it sounds like you really set us all up here for uh an incredible hero's journey that um <laughs> we're all very keen to hear about that's awesome um what um, i suppose we should tell um you know the listeners and the watchers like a little bit about yourself a little about what you do and um mm -hmm. yeah yeah if you just want to you can take the microphone <laughs> all right so yeah, what, who I am and what I do keeps on changing and transforming, right? Um, but as of right now, I'm, I'm a creative, I'm a writer, I love photography, I do stuff on YouTube, I love making films. Um, I also have my own podcast and um, I've been, yeah, running my own online business and, and being creative in that way for, I don't know, maybe eight years or so. And mm. I've worked on all sorts of different projects uh, and things. And I've also, I also run workshops and retreats now and again and um, all sorts of courses and whatnot. I just wrote a book that's coming out in Germany next month. And oh, wow. so I'm, I'm really all about the intersection of the inner work and mindfulness as well as the creative process. So I guess what I've come up with as of late is um, as I inhale, which for me is inner work, shadow work, um, self-care stuff, it's, it's that you know, every, anything that nourishes me right, and gets me closer to myself and, mm. um, and I guess healing inner um, or like overcoming inner barriers. And, so, and then there's the exhale, which is all about then sharing that you know, medicine, that treasure that I found on the inhale with the world and uh, in a creative way. So I'm just all about bringing the inhale and the exhale together. <laughs> oh, that's very cool. Yeah. That's really cool. That um, mm. kind of reminds me of the OM meditation of the opening the mouth, the birth into experience and the, you know, mm, closing the mouth. And the, that's, I really like that. I really like that. And it sounds like this is something that's, um, I suppose, formed for you over time as you've started to notice the, the impact the inner work has. Could you talk us a bit about that? Sure, yeah. So I guess the way I started out also um, as an entrepreneur and as a creative back then, you know, I, I started a travel blog here in Germany and mm. it, it turned into a really big thing and it became Germany's biggest travel blog. It was called Planet Backpack and I had a lot of success with it and you know, things were awesome. I was traveling the world and living the life. And, uh, you know, at the same time, though, I was going through a lot of stuff. And especially in the relationship department, that's been kind of my dharma to work through. Um, oh, cool. And so I, I um, yeah, as I was doing the whole travel blog thing and being a digital nomad and living in paradise and Bali and whatnot, I, you know, was going through um, a lot of depression and anxiety, and I just realized that, um, damn, I I can't just be 
you know, sharing with the world just how amazing my life is and hiding that um, part of myself that's really struggling. And, and so I started sharing and I've always, you know, being this really curious human and very solution oriented, mm-hmm. I, I always, um, when I see a problem and clearly I had a few going on once I had that awareness after a big breakup in 2012, I was kind of like initiated on my path. Uh, and, and then I just tried out everything and all the workshops, all the retreats, all the modalities. And I started sharing a lot of that online and, um, and then eventually realized that this, cause I thought in the beginning I can hack healing, you know, <laughs> Very like, cool. I, I'm going to do this in a year. I'm going to sort all of my stuff out in a year. And, um, <laughs> so only to realize that, Clearly that, uh, that wasn't, I mean, th- th- it, it got me a couple of layers in, you know, and then I was like, okay, there's a lot more layers to this. And so eventually I discovered plant medicine and the work of Dr. Joe Dispenza. And I went to a few of his retreats and I mm-hmm. felt like that's when things started to shift in a bigger way. Um, and then also the breath work has been a huge game changer for me. And um, yeah, I guess over the years now, uh, eight years later since that initiation, um, I've gone all out in like sharing my journey and also helping others, um, you know, find their own way because we all have our own, I don't know, um, approach to um, healing and transformation. And so I'm just presenting a lot of different kind of um, just possibilities and opportunities and options and so then yeah and here we are today in 2020 i had to go through another breakup six months ago which again you know um, brings it all (laughs) you know called me in to myself even further and to do more work and it's been incredible six months of a lot of low highs and lows and all the things in between um but that's kind of in a nutshell what my journey has been like. Yeah. Mm. You know, one of the reasons I, I really wanted to speak with you is because to me from the outside, you, you, you seem like someone who embodies both the importance of the awareness. So doing the inner work and unlike you said at the beginning of the podcast, but the, obviously the exhale as well, the integration, actually it's like, what am I going to take from that awareness and actually apply it to my life? Now that's a very important thing as a therapist that I try to help with my clients, you know, to show mm-hmm. that just a simple conversation, however profound and meaningful ever is 50% of the work. Some people would say 40% of the work. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I suppose the question is like when you, you know, you move through a healing modality such as plant medicine or even just something as simple as an open, honest conversation. What's your method of applying that to your life? Like, do you have some kind of like framework for that or yeah. Hmm. Interesting question. Yeah. Thank you. I guess. Yeah. With all of these things, right? Like you go to a workshop or to a retreat and you come out and then you just feed off of those vibes and then, but you don't actually integrate. And so for the longest time, that was me too. That's why I think a lot of people turn into like workshop junkies and retreat junkies. And, you know, you just go from one to the next to the next because you want that, that high, but it's not really sustainable if you don't integrate it properly. So, I mean, for me, I've been working with coaches and therapists for many years and I continue to do so. Um, And uh, especially after plant medicine journeys or any sort of bigger transformational experience. Mm. And um, so that's super helpful for me to keep that going. Uh, Not just when I think I need it, but also just um, as like an upkeep of my mental health and have someone uh, to get uh, to work through things on a daily basis. And then I do a lot of journaling and journaling has been huge. I mean, so huge that I always, I never realized the effect of journaling because I started with just doing morning pages and I, I was like, man, it's not really doing it for me. And, um, and so I would stop, but then I found my own way of journaling and getting in touch with myself and having conversations with different parts of myself. And oh, so wow. that's been huge. Um, and then, you know, also, I mean, I do a lot of breath work and I'm also in the process of becoming a breath work practitioner. And so um, that's also been just a modality where I get to really connect to myself on a regular basis. Um, and other than that, you know, I use my creativity in many ways to integrate experiences. Like when mm. I 
and sometimes that's a delayed sort of um, activity, you know, because um, I tend to not necessarily share vulnerable things as I'm still in it. <laughs> yep. I, like to, <laughs> um, I like to have, you know, access to the lessons learned, right? To then um, either write about it or make a video about it or a podcast or whatever. And that actually really helps me to integrate and process uh, mm. an experience um, or a time of my life. And so, um, yeah, creating and sharing has been super healing for me in that sense as well. So I don't know if you would call any of this a framework, but I have a very elaborate, you know, morning routine in place. I do a lot of meditation um, and breath meditation also, and just a lot of more and more any sort of practice that gets me back into my body and actually feeling stuff. And I think once I understood how to feel, um, it made it so much easier to integrate any experience into my life. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. I think you're totally right. I, th I think whenever we really, people always talk about getting to the truth of who we are, you know, and who we are is obviously always changing, but a big truth is uh, how we're feeling. And we've become so good at distracting ourselves from that because we just can, you know, we can if a split second of boredom, I'll just shut the phone on or, or something like that, you know? So I think, um, totally. I think you're so right when you say that getting down to the truth and, you know, allowing yourself to feel and, do you find that coming up in your journal work as well? Like not necessarily writing about what you should and shouldn't do, but just writing about how you feel. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think it's, it's a huge, it's an amazing tool to learn how to feel because mm. I mean, in many ways, right? So as you maybe start with morning pages, you just learn how to vomit on the page. Like for yeah. me, it was just vomit. And <laughs> like emotional, man, like just any sort of whatever was there. And so a lot of that, and I'm a cancer and like, I'm just, I'm all, because, you know, all these years that I suppressed my emotions because I was in the closet until I was 26 and I never grew up in a very um, warm emotional environment and, and feeling and expressing your emotions uh, wasn't really invited at all. It was, it mm. was um, criticized in many ways. So I had a long journey uh, to wow. reconnect to, to my emotions and to my body. And especially as someone who is actually very sensitive and being a cancer and all the things, you know, it's like, I'm, you know, I had all these emotions stuck in my body and, and I did get sick at the time as well. And then, um, and then eventually I had my coming out and, and, you know, things just sort of went away wow. <laughs> because I was finally able to express myself and, and my emotions and, and express my truth and my authenticity. So, so feel, learning mm. how to feel my emotions has been huge. And I've also done a lot of work with uh, a, a therapist who, who's very well trained in somatic experiencing and oh, cool. um, who really got me to feel emotions in my body and I remember like the beginning when she tried to do that with me you know I was just like I'm not feeling anything yeah. <laughs> I don't know where she's like so where do you feel the sadness in your body and I'm like hey. I don't know Maybe, <laughs> yeah. it's like it just I just couldn't take it seriously I couldn't I felt really like a little bit of shame and embarrassed right like in that interaction with my therapist to even I don't know. So there's, so there was a layer of, well, being numb maybe also to certain sensations in my body. And it really took a while to like slowly open up and relax into it and, and find that, uh, that connection to these subtle emotions and feelings and signals from our bodies. Right. And mm. so, um, and then coming back to journaling for me, that was such a, or, and still is such an amazing tool because it's just me and the page. Mm. So I can be as honest and, and all the things as, as I want. And so um, it's been beautiful to explore. I'm sure you're familiar with internal family systems, right? And to um, kind of look at myself as all these different parts and, you know, there's the one that is really anxious when, you know, in dating and relationships and who lacks or struggles with self-worth and self-love. And, and then there's this other part that um, gets really um, defensive and, and angry and, you know, in, in certain situations. And then there's, you know, so there's all these different parts. And, and so I just interact with them on the page and, and see how they feel and then understanding that I'm not the full emotional experience. There's, there's all these different parts of me and I can separate myself from them. That doesn't necessarily mean I reject them, but I just give them more space so that I can um, inquire 
what they're here to tell me and mm. um, what I can do for them and all that sort of stuff. And it's funny talking about this now, you know, if we'd had this conversation, you know, at the beginning of my journey, I'd be like, oh, this, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. <laughs> what the hell is this chick? So, yeah, it's just been a really long journey, learning how to feel and be open and honest with myself and tuning into my body. And, and the page is one of the best ways to do this. It's like self-therapy. Kind of. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think, you know, it's, it's hard for me to take off the therapist hat sometimes, but I, you know, I always, when I, when I hear someone talking, you know, like you with that amount of vulnerability and all that sort of stuff, I, I love it so much because, you know, oftentimes we do tend to shame ourselves um, when we, when we feel like it's like, Oh, I, you know, I can't feel, or I can't do this and that. So often we actually just don't have the words to articulate how we're feeling. Mm. We, we judge ourselves because of it, but it's actually just, we don't know how to do anything else. So I think your <laughs> point about journaling is so right because you're actually providing, you know, giving yourself the time to like, you know, anxiety feels like racing heart, you know, anxiety feels like mm. you know, funny stomach, you know, giving yourself the time to actually learn a language is massive, you know? That's huge, actually. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you bring this up because once I learned the language around it, that gave me more access to it. And yeah. also there's something about language, right? And so actually when I got into nonviolent communication by Marshall Rosenberg, and then there is these like lists of feelings and emotions somewhere on the internet, like a PDF or something. And, and just like having this right there and being able to like go through, it's like, yep, this is yeah. how I'm feeling, you know, this. and that made a huge difference to just learning new vocabulary to be able to express myself. Yeah. Mm, mm, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, is, and do you still do journaling every morning? Still pretty adamant with that? Um, you know, I've, I've give myself a bit more slack. I mean, there's days when I don't do it, but for the, for the, yeah, most days I do it. Um, I try to not just do it when I need it. I try to also do it on the days when I don't need it and I just do it. Nice. Um, I'm currently in the process of, uh, doing the four days of expressive writing, um, by what's his name? James Pennebaker, uh, yeah. where you write about a traumatic experience for four days in a row and pfft, it's, uh, it's <laughs> I've been procrastinating on, on that one for a while, but um, it's, yeah, it's fascinating what you can do just by writing about certain experiences. And I mean, Penny Baker has done a shit ton of research on that and the results are pretty clear, just how healing that is, not just on an emotional level, but also on a physical level. So I think that's one of the most incredible things about his research is that he showed that, you know, people, um, people's immune systems, you know, recovered from, from serious yeah. chronic illnesses. It's just like, what? Yeah. By writing words on a piece of paper, I think is, yeah. it just, it just goes to show like how much we do need to let this stuff out in a, in a productive fashion. You know, I think people yeah. are like, oh, okay, I just need to let it out. It's like, well, don't necessarily punch your coworker. Let's go to the gym for that. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and also actually, um, so I started doing more deeper journaling actually a while back when I got into, cause I was struggling with, um, gut issues and some, some chronic pain stuff that just wasn't getting better. And, and, uh, and, and I, I knew that it somehow was all related, you know, to, uh, suppressed emotions and whatnot, and especially the gut issues, you know, so it's, it's just a classic. And, yeah. um, and then I started working with someone who uh, got me onto Dr. John Sarno. I don't know if you're familiar mm -hmm. with him, but no. he is all about the mind body connection. He died a couple of years ago, but he's written, he wrote a few books around the idea that basically, and he started out with just back pain. Oh, and then wow. eventually he like, um, he expanded it to include all sorts of chronic, chronic pain and probably also cancer and whatnot. Is that with wow. all of that, the, <clears throat> it's basically all suppressed emotions. And, um, and then what the body does is it uh, withdraws oxygen from certain areas in your body. And that's when we then experience pain or maybe Whoa. there's tumor forming or, you know, um, and, and gut issues, skin issues and whatever. And, um, and so the, and also it's, I guess also connected to Gabor Mate's work, you know, like when the body says no and like, uh, seeing that um, when we have traumatic experiences, when we don't fully actually process emotions, they, they stay stuck and then they turn into disease. And so 
I started working with mm -hmm. someone who was working on the basis of, of Dr. John Sarno's work and, uh, and he made me list out, he was like, can you write down all the, all the reasons why you might think that you have these gut issues, you know? And so in the beginning, you know, I was like, I don't know. So I came up with like three or four reasons, but then you start this list and then over days, I uh, accumulated a long list of possible <laughs> things that are influencing my, my gut, you know, and the oh, pain. Wow. And so, and then he said, well, for each and every one of them, you know, every day you journal about it. Mm -hmm. and see what comes up which is basically like expressive writing and so in, in a different way and so every day I would write about um, any of those things and obviously it would be a lot of emotions coming up and Dr. Transarno says a lot of this, this suppressed emotions comes down to rage and anger and fear um, that's been sitting there for so long and um, and so with that and then doing breath work uh, a lot of breath work and just processing even more emotions. Uh, so I think journaling and breath work go so well together, actually. Oh. Um, I've been, I'm now at a point where like my gut issues are almost gone and wow. I don't really have a whole lot of chronic pain anymore either. So yeah, it's been fascinating. <laughs> it, it is so fascinating. You know, this idea that the body keeps the score, somatic experiencing this, you know, that the body is, um, just kind of like the real keeper of our own experience and, and getting into that. And then, and then the fact that we have to get to like adulthood before we can start to learn the language that something that we probably should have figured out when we were, you know, six months old is pretty crazy. I wanted to, um, I wanted to take you back, um, through your own life. <laughs> if, we, <laughs> if we could just like when you were embarking on the first stages of, you know, unbeknown to you, kind of initiating yourself into your own individuality. What was that like, the initial stages of, you know, moving um, from Germany and like, you know, yeah, take us to that experience. You mean in terms of how I started to uh, express myself and like embrace my truth and go through? Yeah, because it's, it's not easy. That, that those steps are so hard. Mm. Well, I think, to be honest, um, I always had a really low threshold of doing things I don't want to do. And um, cool. I always, uh, knew, I always was, had a really strong will, I think. So that was the other thing. And um, however, so with me being in the closet for so long and really, I mean, looking back, I mean, I was into women when I was like 13 years old, you know, but I was so ashamed and, and just could not even fathom the idea that I would be with women. It was the, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it took me a very, very long time. And so in combination with um, my low threshold and, and really only wanting to do things that I wanted to do, once I had my coming out, you know, at 26, so I have my 10 year anniversary this year. Oh, um, nice one. <laughs> I, um, I then, you know, once you, once I showed up for myself and once I said yes to myself to who I really am you know mm. um that gave me the confidence to fully embrace myself in all other areas of life yeah um and i wrote about this i think the other day actually in an instagram story it's like when you have as a gay person a queer person whatever and and you have your coming out it's i mean your sexual identity goes so deep right it's such a fundamental part of your identity and mm. who you are and so for me it was like once i came out with that it was like the floodgates opened. And so for me to then do my own thing and start my own business and just follow, uh, follow my highest excitement really every day wasn't hard anymore because mm. the coming out, that was, that was the groundwork, you know? And before that, I mean, I just always, like I said, my, the main driver for me to do my own thing and travel the world and leave home so early was mainly because of the circumstances at home. And so that was that, I guess, discomfort, that lack of um, connection and, and grounding really just pushed me, you know, further and further and um, to constantly be seeking novel experiences, to constantly be seeking these peak experiences and find my happiness in all these different places. Um, so all that is to say, it's it's been a quiet uh, interesting journey for sure. And I'm still now at 36 in the process of, you know, making sense of it all in a way and, and really looking at it from, wow, you know, what is this hero's journey? Um, and what is that medicine that I'm taking back? And I'm, I guess, still in the process of, um, 
looking into that, which is really fascinating with, you know, as, as I gain more awareness and consciousness and seeing how my life has come together in that way. And then also now, you know, with Corona times, yeah. and maybe I'm a little bit all over the place with, with uh, explaining myself right now, but no, no, it's I'll really love- been, it's really been a, a coming home for me properly because I haven't spent this much time in my home country in many years. And I haven't, and yeah, just having spent two months with my family in, in the South of Germany was, was scary. And then, um, but also really, really healing because I really took the time to slow down and to connect to my home country, to the land, to also my family and, and to just, and be okay with it, you know, where I come from. Cause I always hated it. I always hated that yeah. town and I never, so, so that's been huge. And I'm, I, I almost feel like during this Corona crisis, I've been coming full circle with so many things. And so it's been actually really healing for me. And I would have never, ever spent all this time here and gone through this if it had, if it hadn't been for a Corona. So Wow. Thanks, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. If we could personify Corona, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I think I, what I love about that story is that, you know, cause I'm really into comparative mythology. I love it. Um, and I try to use that kind of narrative therapy idea. A lot of the work that I do, um, people often forget even the Buddha, um, neglected that idea of the return in the, in the last mm-hmm. part of the hero's journey. He didn't want to teach the, as you say, medicine, um, that, that he'd learned embarking on his own experience. And I think what's so cool about yours is that coming back to where it all started and seeing the same land with a different pair of eyes is just like, oh, mm. wow, like that, that must mm-hmm. be quite um, profound, I suppose. Mm. Yeah, it really has been. And I've really been reflecting um, on how I've transformed and just this new found grounding within myself. It's been really fascinating, you know, and because throughout most of my life, I struggled with a lot of depression and that's been getting so much better over the years for sure, because of, you know, a lot of the modalities and, and the healing that I've experienced. But, mm. um, but now these past few months, I've, I feel like by really embracing the silence and, you know, by really slowing life down and I've spent so much time in nature these few months and, Um, and just really, really connecting to that core part of myself that always wanted to run away, that always wanted to be somewhere else, that never wanted to be actually right here, right now. And even though I've been doing a lot of meditation for many years and a lot of yoga and a lot of breath work and all the things, you know, there's something about these last couple of months that took me to a new level of that, that deep connection to myself. And, um, mm. and so I, yeah, it's, it's funny how, you know, I, I never, ever want to say I have it all figured out or I've arrived or anything like that, course, because even now after all these years and, you know, eight years or whatever that it's been, there's always more. And that coming to the, to the conclusion that this is life, you know, there will, you know, it'll always be, a, you know, um, and, I don't know, just riding the waves and wherever this will take me. And for me, I think it's just been learning to, to just really find ways to connect to myself, to my body, to my feelings, to my emotions, to having these really grounding practices in place so that whatever mm-hmm. comes my way, I get through this. And I feel like I'm, even after these few months, way more even prepared than I was before. And yeah, it's so fascinating, man. This inner journey and to to being on this hero's journey um, in our internal world, I find it more and more fascinating the more I allow myself to fall in love with uh, all the you know perceived negative emotions, to fall in love with um, the not moving around, to not being able to travel, um, to mm. fall in love with all the things that I used to resist. You know. Yeah, and and that's. Um... I think, and I think to your point as well, like, you know, the return home is, is um, only good because now you can embark upon the next one, you know, because obviously mm. life is a series of um, ego transformations, I suppose. And um, I think your, your point as well, you know, like I think when you first start reading into this sort of stuff, all of the, these the spiritual teachings and the books, they always talk about, you know, the purpose of life is to just fully have an experience and all this sort of thing. You're like, what the fuck? Like, that doesn't help me out at all. 
I need to like <laughs> deal with my shit. Like help me out, yeah. you know, like tell me yeah. like what plan to take. <laughs> and then you're like, yeah. you come out of, you kind of love yourself a little bit more. There's always things to go. And you're like, Oh, right. I see. Like you can't have the good with the bad and, and all of that mm. sort of stuff, you know? Mm. Yeah. What have you found for yourself that where you find that purpose every day or when you're like down in it and you know, you have, Maybe, I don't know, you, you struggle with that still at times, even though you seem to have found your calling as, you know, working um, as a therapist and helping people. But what comes up for you around that question? Well, I think, yeah, I, I mean, that's a great question. I, I, I can't seem to find anything that gets me into that state of flow other than writing. So I'm, I'm pretty similar mm. to you with, with that one, I think, and the podcast as mm -hmm. well. I think I was having a think about this today. Writing is so cool because it allows you to put words to feelings as we discussed before. Mm -hmm. But then when you read a sentence, this is what I love about it. When you read a sentence, you're like, Oh damn, that's actually totally the way I feel. Just feels like I can actually close that part of the book now. And I wrote something mm -hmm. today, which I'm very biased about and I really enjoyed writing, <laughs> but um, it was like, something about unifying uh, what we do and who we are. And, the, and, and the more we can unify those two, um, the more we can become, and these aren't my words now, I read this in a book, but the more we can become vessels of forces that transcend us. So we become a, a droplet of water that is happy to move with the ocean, despite yeah. the fact that we're going where everyone or the force is going, we actually feel comfortable because we've integrated the aspects of ourselves that we were once separated from. And I think that idea, um, you know, whether it's, whether, whether, whether it's guitar, I'm just looking at the guitar, whether it's podcast, whether it's relationship, if you can start to give yourself into some kind of creative endeavor, that is literally just who you are outside of mm -hmm. yourself. Um, mm -hmm. I think that kind of idea really, really reigns true for me. Yeah, I get that. I had this experience with my shaman in Ecuador a couple of years ago. Uh, as I was in the middle of more relationship dramas, which I was like, I don't understand why I have all this <laughs> drama in my life, you know? And <laughs> yeah. so we, we were deep in ceremony with Wachuma San Pedro. And, wow. um, and he said to me, Connie, you need to just focus on creating. You need to just focus on utilizing all that beautiful creative energy. You need to stop letting go of all the power struggles, which also sit in the second energy center. Right. And you need to use that beautiful energy that you are putting into all these relationship dramas and into all these women and to just use it and share it with the world and create, mm -hmm. just focus on your creativity. And that still is always in the back of my head. I'm like, whatever is happening in my life, whatever dramas, whatever, I'm always like, I just have to come back to my creative energy. I just have to use that creative energy and everything else will fall in place. Um, and yeah. for the most part, that's been the case. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I can't, I, I mean, I, I mean, I'm, I'm no shaman, but that, that makes so much sense to me as well. You know, I think that that idea that, you know, we are entirely unique, you know, no one will ever have this kind of, um, you know, pair of eyes on the world. No one will ever have this kind of series of past experiences and all that sort of stuff, but we can give to the world just the way we see it. And I think, you know, mm -hmm. when you kind of have a bit of fun doing that, um, life can get very interesting. What, what took you to plant medicine? I'm interested in that. Yeah, great question. I had tried out all sorts of things and I then remember I was, back in Bali and man, I was struggling. I was depressed, you know, still having issues um, in relationships. I was, you know, my big thing is the codependency stuff and mm. getting in at the, you know, for years getting involved into getting involved with women and in, in relationships that just could only end in dramas because of the dynamic that I created being an anxious you know, attachment person and then uh, attracting a lot of avoidant attachment people. So, um, <laughs> so that, that was kind of the dynamic that would eventually always end in just a lot of pain and, and, you know, my abandonment wounds and yeah. the rejection and the, my self-worth and it was just craziness. And, um, and then usually that would eventually then lead me really deep into depression, you know, and especially when there was, you know, when all the dramas were gone, I would then fall into 
depression, not of a lack of self-worth or self-love, but just the pure mm. question of why am I here? Because if once everything, all the dramas were gone and I didn't have to focus on anything outside of myself anymore, you know, there was no relationship to focus on, there was whatever, uh, and my money situation was sorted out and whatnot, then suddenly I was faced with just myself. And wow. I was like, shit. So <laughs> underneath all of that, underneath everything, is always that feeling of purposelessness yeah. and that, that there's no meaning to mm. anything. And, and I just, so th that I, I remember vividly when I was sitting in Bali and like dealing with those questions. And, and then I was talking to a friend of mine, um, who's also Australian actually. And she said to mm. me, Connie, you need to go and see Jonathan in Ecuador. And I knew that she'd been working with a shaman in Ecuador and I was never really interested in plant medicine, but suddenly I think it must've been maybe through listening to Aubrey Marcus's podcast a few years ago and he was mm. talking about it. And slowly, slowly I was like, hmm, interesting. But I was always a little scared, you know? And then she, she said, uh, go work with Jonathan. He does one-on-ones. Like he doesn't actually do, like I, would, I wouldn't have done it if it was, you know, to, I wouldn't have put myself into like a big circle um, or into a big group to, to do plant medicine. And so yeah. I, yeah, I, I contacted him and things were in flow and I ended up going to uh, Ecuador and I lived with him and his family for a couple of weeks. And wow. um, he does, he, not, he doesn't just do these ceremonies. He does like the pre work. So he does coaching sessions basically, or, and then, you know, you do the ceremonies and then you, you know, you keep having uh, sessions with them. And so he's very, um, into really providing a full integrated experience for people. Wow. And he loves working with individuals and couples and families and all that sort of stuff. And so, um, yeah. And I've been back a few times since, and we've become friends and, um, I've been helping them out with their business, but, that was how I got into plant medicine. It was really just once you hear the call, you know, it's time <laughs> and yeah. then there's no way out. So absolutely. Just do it. Yeah. And how, does, have, you how any, does, have you had any, sorry, have you had any experience with plant medicine? Uh, well, I have, uh, I, I did a fair bit of mushrooms when I was a kid and, um, I had a big experience on mushrooms that traumatized me because I was very unintentional about it. Um, which wasn't cool, <laughs> but then I've since kind of gone back and, you know, employed some ideas with a bit of, bit of weed and I had an incredible experience on MDMA. Um, it was an amazing mm. experience. Um, but then my other half is a breathwork facilitator, so I can't really run, <laughs> but, uh, no, I think, I think they're brilliant. And I, that's actually my next question, Connie. I was going to ask like, how do, how does your, do you see like the similarities Are there differences between plant medicine and breath work? Like what, what's kind of drawn you to breath work now? Yeah. Great question as well. And I think the one reason why I totally got into breath work and I got really uh, passionate and a little bit obsessed with it, you know, <laughs> it, it was because I was like, Holy shit. So I can have similar experiences to doing, um, plant medicine, mm. um, with just my breath. And it felt so empowering, you know, and I don't have to travel around the world. I don't, I'm not dependent on anyone. Um, even though I like working with, you know, breath facilitators and doing it in a group setting or whatever, but it's, it's just my breath. And, and, and so I, the first time that I had, a breathwork experience was a few years ago uh, when I was in LA and I went to, I was, I, yeah, again, I think it must have been Aubrey Marcus. He was talking about holotropic breathwork. Yeah. And so I looked it up and I found this guy in LA and um, yeah, went to one of his intro sessions and um, it was full on. <laughs> and um, he, I rem he had it, he had it all set up in his house and because he's been doing this for so long, he's had the most amazing like music system, like the, 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 he's had speakers that you would only see probably in the most amazing clubs in oh Berlin God. or something, you know, wow. like it was, it was this super intense, uh, experience just with the music and, and, and the music that he, he chooses for, for the journey is very tribal, you know, a lot of drums, mm. um, no lyrics. Um, and so, I just had this crazy experience um, where I got in touch with my inner child and a lot of, yeah, just beautiful. And then, but then I didn't get into 
that much more. Um, and then until last year when I had, a, uh, when I was going through this breakup and I was in Bali and I was like, man, uh, I need something that I can, I need something that would help me process all these emotions on a physical level, not mm -hmm. just up here, but like, yeah. And so, you know, being in Bali and you have access to all these amazing people doing amazing things and all these modalities and whatnot. And I ended up in a breathwork circle and, and then also doing one-on-one -on -one sessions. And then I did all the breathwork circles I could do and yeah. several times a week. And I, you know, I, I worked with different teachers and facilitators and, and then I was like, man, I want to do that too. It's just, it was just such, it helped me so much to get through the breakup and the sadness and the loneliness and, it was it was so liberating and so transformative and then um yeah and so then in in march i went to canada for the first part of the training and mm. um and now i'm actually doing the because of this whole thing in corona you know yeah. everything had to be changed around so i'm actually going to be doing the training with michael stone who was that first um teacher of mine in, in LA uh, and he's doing like a six months online training um, and then an in-person training in January. So nice. yeah, I'm really excited about that just to see what comes through that. Um, I also feel really called to share this modality with the queer community because there's so much collective pain and, and totally. you know, so much healing that's still needed within the community and i um, curious to see how to maybe, you know, offer some stuff around that eventually. And yeah, I don't know. I'm still really open as to how to integrate um, breathwork into my work eventually. But yeah, it's, it's one of the best things ever. And, and as you mentioned, there is definitely that connection to the experiences that I've had doing plant medicine. Um, and because uh, of this altered states of con consciousness um, that I can only compare to some of the experiences that I've had doing yeah, yeah, wachuma or ayahuasca or something. Yeah. And you never know what happens. Like it's the same with plant medicine. You're like, well, I'm just gonna, you know, drink this or eat this. And, and then, <laughs> you know, it's up to whatever. <laughs> yeah. And then that's it. And it's the same with breath where you just surrender right to the breath and you're like, I have no clue what's going to happen today. Yeah, um, that's so true. I find that like I might set an intention for breath work or something and, and I've, I'm lucky I can get it right from the horse's mouth and like, you know, one of the most <laughs> yeah. incredible experiences. Because it's so funny you were in Bali. We were in Bali um, in 2000 and in mid-2018 to late 2018. Were you in Bali then? Ah, probably. I've okay, been in true. and out of Bali for a long time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. because awesome. Siobhan, Siobhan had incredible experiences um, doing it and, and she learned from someone named Sarah who that's why I was interested in the the kind of breath work you you what's uh, her last name I think her last no oh, what what is her last name? she'll kill me I, oh, she is from New York so Sarah oh, if yeah. you're Sa listening Sarah, to this, Sarah Sarah Silverstein Sarah she's Silverstein a, yes Sarah Silverstein she's a really good friend of mine actually yeah oh wow just, uh, yeah yeah <laughs> she's a legend she's, she's absolutely a legend yeah, she's she's super dope. Um, yeah, yeah, we're we're about to to launch. A, I'm about to launch a podcast with a friend of mine about breath work called the Breath Circle, and we just interviewed Sarah actually. Oh no way! <laughs> yeah, she's small. That's what I wanted yeah. to ask you because that was um, our healer when we first tried it, and um, it was oh, wow. incredible. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's such a small world, and um, and and her trainer was David Elliott, who does it down in yes. Turkey. Um, I really yeah. want to get him on the podcast too. But, um, oh, yeah, you should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you're so, I think you're so right about, um, that sense of empowerment that you get from doing anything endogenous. The fact that you can reach these mm -hmm. altered states of consciousness, you know, even in yourself. I found that when I was doing float tanks and things. Um, mm -hmm. but even a float tank, mm -hmm. like having to go to a place, I just, I can't help but really, um, really agree with you. You know, when you turn the lights off and you, you know, you do your breath when you come out, and you're like, damn, like, I needed to know that. And you're like, but I feel so good for like, I went in there myself. I didn't need yeah. anything. I didn't need anyone. I trust myself enough to explore those unconscious waters and I feel a lot better, you know? Yes. It's so true. Have you ever done like breath work in the float tank? Uh, I've gotten very high in the float tank. I haven't <laughs> <Yeah>. ever, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't, maybe I need to mix all three of them. <laughs> Yeah, well, that is just something I'd like to try out at some point. Um, yeah, that because cool. I I love experimenting and like stacking different things, you know, together. Sort of. Yeah, you've got you got a joint here, you got a cup of ayahuasca over here. You're already in the float <laughs> tank. You're doing your breath work. 
<laughs> Connie, we need, we need to calm down. <laughs> 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 yeah, it. it's a, I can't help it, man. Like currently, I'm experimenting with uh, microdosing psilocybin yep. uh, mushrooms, and um, and yeah, I don't know. If you'd asked me a year ago, I'd be like, I'm not interested. But yeah. you know, things just sort of um, I don't know come into my life, and then I just get really curious. And uh, totally. microdosing has been really fascinating, actually. Yeah, and, th- and this gets back to our point about you know finding meaning, cultivating a sense of meaning in life, and all these sort of things. I mean, I just I can't. I'm very biased when it comes to this, but I can't see anything more important than trying to understand the self. You know, like how mm. the fu- I, my first memory in life is how the fuck did I get in here? Like, how can I control these things? Like, and it freaks me out. And I think I've just become very attached to that. Wow. I love that. Yeah. And, and same here, man. I, I'm, I really feel like, you know, even though it has been eight years since I embarked on this journey, I still feel like, man, there's still so much more to explore <laughs> just within myself. You know, yeah. like I did this little like breathwork meditation practice this morning that was, was guided. And, oh man, like, I feel like the more I slow down and the more I can sit in silence too, it's like, I get more sensitive and I, I feel more and, and, and that in itself is, is really fascinating, you know? And I feel like there's like this, um, this, uh, heightened sort of sensitivity that we get, the more conscious we become, the, the healthier, you know, probably we die come and like all these things and and so even after all those years there's still layers to feel more and speak more and sensing more and becoming even a little bit more you know like i don't know experience that inner landscape even more you know and it's kind of like google maps and and yeah. and it's like or you have all these or all these rooms inside of yourself that you haven't explored yet and you think that oh now this is it i think i've explored it all and then it's like nah, <laughs> there's, yeah. there's more rooms there's there's more more land to discover and i feel Mm. like it it now that i'm less in resistance to to anything that happens let it be within or outside or whatever um the more i can fully embrace uh, any sort of experience and then become more of like Mm. a a curious traveler right rather than the judger or the the critic or the the victim you know and any of that but actually be like, oh, wow, so this is happening. Let's explore. Let's become curious about these feelings and emotions or sensations or, you know, experiences. And, and that, that and then now it's like, oh, okay. Now it's like becoming really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Do, do, you, do you find that having explored all these, you know, modalities of, you know, inner work, do you find that now just an everyday experience can become a teacher in and of itself? Oh man, so much, so much. And, and like I said, you know, just like, uh, like currently trying out all sorts of different pranayama breathwork oh, yeah. stuff and, and, and like even just, you know, let's say Kabbalah Bhati, right. And the way I've learned it and also my yoga teacher training and whatever. And, and, and then, but suddenly taking things that you've done so many times as they were instructed, but then you take them and you just kind of you alter them a little bit, really yeah. like you pivot a little bit. And then, or the other day I was doing, Dan Brule is, is doing something called Breath Church live oh, once wow. a week or something on Zoom. And he was doing, um, he was uh, teaching us to breathe um, in sync with the music. So he was playing these different songs, you know, that, and we were learning how to get in tune with the beat or the music or the whatever. And like, man, and I'm just like, shit, why did, have I never considered <laughs> yeah. that? Like, of course you can like listen to a piece of music and start yeah. breathing with the piece of music, you know? So I'm like, damn, like yeah. that is some really awesome shit right there. So that is taking a really, you know, I guess ordinary experience, like listening to a piece of music and then suddenly becoming aware of your breath and then, you know, syncing it up with the music and things like that. Or mm. also, you know, also recently, just because I, you know, we have a dog at home and I went out for a walk with her every day for an hour or two and just exploring new areas, um, around my hometown, you know, and I thought I knew it all. I've seen it all, but fuck, no, like when you're more conscious and more aware and actually more in the present moment, yes. you see so much more. And so we kept on exploring and, and, 
I was just like, wow, I feel like I can't believe I grew up here, you know, yeah. and it's actually really beautiful and awesome, but I was never able to fully appreciate it. So, oh man, there's so many experiences where, you know, I feel like I've, up, I've been able to upgrade them because of a lot of the inner work that I've been doing and the, and the practices and modalities. And I think one of the biggest one is the breath. I feel like through that, through that, being able to connect to my breath, being able to connect to my body, being able to connect to my emotions, I can connect more to my outer surroundings and life mm. and people. Yeah, man, it's fascinating. Huh? You know, I think um, one of the interesting things about the breath is that it's perhaps the only vessel to the unconscious that we can control as well. You know, it's the only thing that we can decide to increase, but it's also happening, you know, despite the fact that we're unconscious of, it. and I think, um, and, and breath work has been, you know, among, you know, rituals and traditions, sacred traditions for thousands of years. And the fact that there is now this kind of like breath work revolution, I don't know, maybe it's just my ignorant optimism, but I'm quite excited about the kind of this consciousness revolution that I think the world is kind of going through. It seems like there's this whole bubbling kind of going, you know, mm. you, you see that as well? Or? Huge. Yeah, for sure. Especially with the breath. I think that, um, I mean, maybe it's also when, you know, you want to buy a red car and then suddenly yes. all you see is red cars. Maybe totally. it's that a little bit too. Um, I swear so. there are more red cars. <laughs> <laughs> so all I see is breath work these days, but yeah. I also really breath work cars. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, I totally agree, though. I think that where breathwork is right now is maybe where meditation was, you yeah. know, in terms of mainstream, uh, maybe 15 years ago or something mm. like that, or 10 years ago. I really think that, you know, there's more and more apps around breathwork and some really cool stuff. And then, um, and there is all these beautiful offerings now through the Corona thing and, and, you know, breathwork is teaching online and bringing together different modalities with the breath. And I really think that this is just the beginning mm. of something really, really, really big. And I'm really excited about it. And like here, for example, in Berlin, I mean, even though this is the most forward thinking city, you know, here in Germany, um, breathwork hasn't arrived here yet, like at all. Um, and there, or generally in Germany, like there isn't much going on yet. And I'm really, mm. really, really excited to also bring it, you know, over here and, and, and um, yeah, cause it's, uh, cause when I was living in LA or in Bali, it's like everybody's doing breath work kind of, yeah. you know, but man, there's still um, so many people who haven't heard of it or they're like, I was just talking to a friend yesterday in a while and, and yeah, there's so many people who have no idea what you're talking about. Um, and so there's still, yeah, a lot of potential in terms of the breath. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. Oh, for sure. Well, I think, um, you know, I, I think we could uh, talk for hours and I think when we do um, ayahuasca in a float tank, smoke and weed, um, you know, we'll have to talk about that experience as well. That's going to be pretty intense, but um, <laughs> I think, and I think it'd, I'd love to do a, a round two with you when you've done the, the breath work and you can talk us about kind of, um, you know, how the training was and all that sort of stuff. But Connie, where can people find you and, anything you're working on currently like what, what's happening yeah sure so i mean my website is probably the hub for everything with all the links it's connie c-o-n-n-i dot m-e that's my website i'm on instagram of course connie dot Pizalski, and i have a youtube and a podcast so but everything's really on the, on the website and other than that um yeah we're about to launch a, a, a podcast all around breath work called the, the breath circle i think it's probably uh, going to be released next week, um, which I also love to interview your partner for that actually. And, and sure thing. You two together. Yeah. yeah um, sure. <laughs> and, uh, and then, yeah, if you know, any of your uh, listeners are German speaking, then I have a book coming out uh, in a couple mm. of weeks. That's called find your magic. It's all about uh, kind of my journey into finding my calling and finding purpose in life and the journey inwards. And um, I hope to also then find a publisher in the English speaking world Absolutely. to get it out there as well. And yeah, and other than that, oh man, there's always so much stuff happening. But yeah, definitely follow along on my socials. And yeah, so thank you. Guys, please do follow along. It's really, it's, it's, it's good stuff. And, um, and I think you, you mentioned it before, Connie, but I think one of the best things about it is that it's so crazy real, crazy real, sometimes confronting real because you just, there's a lot of bravery that goes into that sort of stuff. But I think the more we are exposed to people like yourself, the more 
we actually feel comfortable to to kind of do the same thing as well. So really important for me to um, express my gratitude to you for that. And also for coming on the show after the twice, two times that I had to buddy you schedule. I, um, I really appreciate that, um, Connie. So, so thank you so much. Thank you. It's uh, been such a pleasure uh, speaking with you and, and sharing a bit about my journey. And thank you. Um, so much gratitude. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And this won't be the last time. We'll definitely do more. So it'll be good. Awesome. Yeah. You need to come onto my show as well. So <laughs> keep this done. Going. Done deal. I'll fly over. <laughs> now we can do it online. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for listening. Talk next week. Bye-bye.